Hey everyone, welcome back to Unity Roundtable, a series where we discuss Unity-related news, tips and tricks, tutorials, and more. Despite all the bad decisions that Unity and its CEO have been making lately, the game dev world carries on, and I think we should take a break from all the negative press to discuss the changes coming to Unity 2022.2 that are now available for testing via the Unity 2022 beta release. There's a lot to cover, so I've split this update into two Unity Roundtable episodes, with part two coming in just a few days. In this first part, we'll cover the latest workflow enhancements that were brought to the high definition and universal render pipelines. With the addition of forward plus rendering in URP, you can now incorporate a larger number of lights than the current limit of 8 lights per object in your scenes. Simultaneously, the performance of rendering in your project scales better as the number of lights and objects increases. You can also select Forward Plus as a renderer of choice the same way you toggle between the current forward and deferred renderer. The new rendering layers allow you to filter and configure how different objects get rendered and how they are affected by various rendering options in a scene. Unity layer masks are shared and used for various purposes in a project, including physics and application logic. Rendering layers allow for a better workflow by separating rendering masking concerns from other masking behaviors in a project. This change allows you to filter and configure how different objects get affected by different decal projectors in a scene. Decals are useful for adding extra texture details to a scene, especially to break the repetitiveness of materials and their detail patterns. A decal projector affects all meshes in a scene by default, which can be less than ideal sometimes. With decal layers, you can now decouple meshes from specific decal projectors in your scene. Thanks to crossfade support, you can now perform smoother transition blending between the current mesh LOD and the next LOD based on the object's distance to the camera. In case you aren't aware, LOD, or level of detail, is a technique to reduce the GPU cost needed to render distant meshes. As the camera moves, different LODs will be swapped to provide the right level of quality. Crossfading allows smoother transitions of different LOD geometries and avoid the harsh snapping and popping that occurs during a swap. This change provides tooling to assist you with upgrading your existing projects from the built-in render pipeline. Unity has made various improvements to make the upgrade tooling more robust and useful to you. In this update, Unity has further improved the usability and performance of the converter based on community feedback from projects with a large number of assets. The new water system allows you to enhance your worlds by easily creating oceans, seas, lakes, or rivers with refractions, reflections, underwater effects, caustics, waves, and foam. I haven't had the opportunity to play around with this yet, so more on this in a future video. HDLP path tracing denoising will provide users the choice between NVIDIA Optics AI Accelerated Denoiser and Intel OpenImage Denoise to achieve noise-free path traced images in situations where it simply wasn't possible before or would have taken a lot more time with natural convergence of sample accumulation. Note that this is related to denoising for offline or interactive rendering. It does not make path tracing real-time for game experiences. Continued development of this experimental feature delivers an initial implementation of light leaking prevention. The adaptive probe volumes represent a step towards enabling probe-lit static geometry, which makes it possible for light probes to replace some light maps for static objects. Additionally, GPU memory streaming is now supported. This enables creators to build and run scenes where lighting data assets don't fit entirely in GPU memory. Finally, Unity has provided an experimental offering for baking multiple lighting scenarios, enabling creators to bake multiple lighting data sets with the ability to blend between them during authoring and runtime. 
Volumetric materials allow you to create procedural local fog using Shader Graph and HDRP. You can now create advanced procedural fog and volumetric effects authored with Shader Graph and apply it to any local volumetric fog component. This allows the creation of custom noise, fractals, ground fog effects, custom clouds, aurora borealis, sandstorms, gas orbs, or volumetric ghosts. Local volumetric fog now offers different blending nodes, allowing to remove fog for example, in buildings or inside a vehicle. And finally, the full screen master node allows Shader Graph to be used to create materials for full screen effects inside a custom pass or a custom post process. You can easily retrieve scene color and buffer data to freely change colors, add highlights, or any other custom made filters. Samples have been added to the HDRP package with different use cases of full screen shader graph, such as edge detection, night vision, and color blindness filters. Shader graph can also now be used for custom render textures as well. This allows easy offering of dynamic textures that are key in the rendering of effects such as TV screens, dynamic snow, or sand deformation, or even water interaction. The high-end cinematic eye shader with caustics and high-quality PCSS area light shadows developed by Unity's demo team and used in the enemies short film are now integrated with HDRP. In the next video, we'll cover some productivity changes, editor changes, updates made to performance insights, various platform optimizations, and a quick dots update. Stay tuned for part 2 in just a couple of days. And that's all we've got for you today. If you liked this Unity Roundtable update, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Unity Roundtable is powered in part by my patrons, the Dummies, and you too can join the Dummy Army by supporting me on Patreon. You can also join us on Discord via the link in the description below. Thanks for tuning in, see you in the next one.